Hello everyone and welcome to episode 27 of my Let's Play series. I've just spent about the last hour kind of relaxing. It's Saturday morning for me at the time of recording this. Ah, oh, it's so lovely to just have a weekend to play some Minecraft. It's lovely. I've repaired my tools a little bit because I would like to start us off today by going on a little mining adventure. What do you say? One hour mining trip? I think it'll be fun. Let's do it. It's been a little while since I've done any strip mining and I'm kind of just itching to do a little bit. I want to get rich. I want to have some diamonds, some more lapis, all of the amazing things that you need when you're mining. Plus, it's just really relaxing. Every time I go mining, some of you end up asking me how I find so many diamonds in my world. I'm currently at Y11 and basically I'm just strip mining. So what I end up doing is making this big, long corridor, as you can see right here. If there's any caves that I find like these branching off of it, I'll go explore the cave. The caves on this level will be a really easy way to get some already exposed diamonds. So if you find any of those, Definitely go ahead and explore them. <laughs> like for example, what a fantastic demonstration. Oh my gosh, this world just knows. So basically what I'll do is I'll kind of go between strip mining and caving. And this is an easy way to do it because it means that I don't really get bored as I'm strip mining because let's be real, tunneling this much is, is boring. <laughs> oh my gosh, right. How many diamonds did we get? How many diamonds? Okay, it looks like it's probably a group of four. Let's pick these up. You see I have the Silk Touch Enchant right now. I'm using that so that I'll get the pure ore. We'll go up and fortune everything once we're done up at the surface. So now that I've been in this cave, I'm going to continue with some strips. So I just space it out by two, and every two I'll head into my strip mine, and I'll just go, sometimes I go until I find diamonds, like right here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is, it's like my world knew that I was recording. What, what the heck? Why is there so many diamonds? Okay, I was trying to do a demonstration, but sure, I'll take all of the riches. So I found diamonds in that one. So now I'm going to move on to this one and we'll just get rid of the gravel and we'll head in again. I don't mind strip mining as a builder because it means that I get to collect a whole bunch of the stone as well. And when you're building, the stone can be just as valuable as the diamonds sometimes. We need stone for our jungle ruins project and also a project that I have planned for us today. Anyways, time for me to get back to work. Oh, hey look, it's more lava. Maybe there'll be more diamonds in here. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? These caves are reminding me so much of that Minecraft live update that they announced. Are you guys excited? I won't speak about it just in case you haven't been spoiled yet somehow, but I'm excited. <laughs> Let me know if you're excited. And also, did you see me as a part of the Minecraft live pre-show? I had so much fun being a part of that. It was such an honor. It's, ah, it's so cool. The Minecraft team is amazing. Looks like there's more lava here. So just gonna kind of mine my way through and see if I can't find myself any diamonds. Okay, big cave, big cave. Whoa, this is a really big cave. Hello. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Lots of baddies in here. This cave is massive. I actually really like it. This is one of the nicer caves that I found recently. I am looking for diamonds though, so I need to stay below 16 in my Y level. Gotta keep that in mind. Excuse me, zombies. No, thank you. Oh, look at that. More diamonds. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm getting so lucky this trip. I love it. Look at this, more diamonds. This caving tactic is definitely paying off for me today. How successful this caving is really just depends on how big the caves are in the area where you are and depending on the Y level of them. Been mining for a long time now and to be honest, I haven't found any extra diamonds. I found most of my diamonds in caves today, which is really interesting. Normally I definitely find more through strip mining, but I don't really know if that's the normal. I would say I cave probably a little bit less than the average person. I prefer strip mining for the blocks. Which one do you guys prefer? What do you usually do? Strip mining for me is pretty safe. As you know, in most of my worlds, I like to not die. I like to get blocks and it's sufficient for getting diamonds, but caves are a lot more fun and exciting. I'll give you that. Just going to go a little tiny bit further on this strip and then I think I'll call it a day for now. This has been a great haul though. I can't wait to use fortune on my stuff. All right, mining trip success for sure. Look at my inventory and look at what we have in here. 
Okay, more. And we have some cobble in here. So we have so much building material and just all of the things that we need. Let's send you up to the top. Oh, whoops. There you go. Goodbye, little minecart. And it is nighttime, so we can sleep down here instead of going up in the nighttime. Now, I suppose the next thing to do is actually mine all of these ores with fortune and smelt them down and see what we actually got. First up, putting in the gold and the iron so that it can smelt down. These ores are the ones that we used our silk touch on, so I think it's time for a flex. What do you think? Let's build a tower of ore and see what we get. I've always wanted to do this. This is such a flex. I love when you're playing on multiplayer servers and people do this. Just going all the way up with all of my ores. I'm particularly excited about the diamonds because we only have 14, which if we didn't have fortune would mean, well, we just have 14 diamonds, which is not a ton, but with fortune three, this could be pretty intense. All right. <laughs> this is giving me a very good view of my world. Hang on. I wanna actually turn up my um, render distance. Here we go, let's let that load in. Look at my world, oh my goodness. We can literally see it all from here. There's the farming area we worked on last time. We're above the village. There is my tree houses over there, the jungle temple, the fox sanctuary. We can see it all. This is a great way to get a layout. All right, fortune three. Let's go, let's see what we get. Oh my gosh, okay, 26, 33 diamonds. Heck yeah, that is awesome. All right, overall, a very impressive haul. I am so pleased with that, we did awesome. All right, mining trip aside, I think it's time for our next project. Now there is something in this world that is of great value that we have never actually obtained. And I think it's about time that we go do that. Of course, that item that I am referring to is the dragon egg. When we fought the dragon, I never actually went to get the egg. All right, here is our lovely portal room. Let's hop on in and go see our end. Oh my gosh, it's been a while since I've been back here. So I've always been told that you shouldn't touch this dragon egg. I've always been the type to go get a piston and get it that way. But all of you yelled at me in my comments saying that I should just punch the egg and then use a torch to pick it up once it's on this. So... Oh, wait! Did it just fall? It did! It fell through the portal! Into the spawn chunk! That's crazy! I had no idea that that was a thing. Why didn't I know that that was a thing? So if you guys don't know, that right there, the exact spot where the dragon egg is sitting is where I spawned in in this world. I'm not sure why I didn't know that this was a thing, but I'm glad that I do now. Thank you for teaching me about that. Okay, so I think I could just do that. No, it fell through the torch. Okay, okay, hang on. Yeah, got it. Oh my gosh, dragon egg. There we go, next generation. All right, sorry that was so hard for me. I have no idea why I didn't know that that was a thing. So now that we have the egg, I suppose the next logical step is to actually do something with it. I don't wanna have this dragon egg and have it just stowed away in a chest to never see the light of day. I also don't really wanna put it in my vault because I feel like that's kind of a waste. This isn't something that I wanna hide and keep secret. This is something that I wanna show off to the world. I think that that means we are about ready for another build. And this build is gonna take place right there. Do you see that island? We've never actually done anything with that island. And it's a shame because it's a beautiful island. I think today we change that and we actually get to work building ourselves a place for this dragon egg. Hey Scooter, would you believe me if I told you I lost a shulker box? I don't think it's actually lost just temporarily misplaced. Do you remember once upon a time when I had a gray shulker box? I remember, I remember it quite well, but I don't remember where I put it. Why am I like this? I don't know. Oh, I found them. Oh my gosh. How silly to leave both of these out here. What was I thinking? <laughs> shulker boxes have been located. It's time to begin the building process. 
I don't know about all of you, but I personally love building on islands. I think I would love to do a survival series or maybe hardcore world at some point that involved me just building up an island, like a survival island. That'd be so much fun. I kind of miss my 1.13 series in that aspect. But not to worry, today we are just going to work on this little island right here. I'm going to start by mapping out kind of a circle. So we're going to start with a cross like this and then slowly work this into a circle. All right, that's not too bad. That definitely looks like a circle to me. This build is definitely going to sort of scratch my castle building itch. Although it is meant to be a fortress and not a castle, it's still gonna kind of do the trick. Building it of the stone brick and kind of mixing it in with the same theme that we've been going through with this village, I think will work so well on this little island. I can't wait to see it once it's finished. I've been thinking for a while about what larger builds I actually want to do in this world, and that's a tough thing to think about. We've gone fairly small scale so far with everything in this world, relatively, compared to like super big mega builds that some people do. And to be honest, I have no desire to really start on a mega build, but I do want to add more variety and have a couple of larger sort of main structures around. So I think that this can sort of be one of them. Plus, who doesn't love a cute little fortune build on an island. I know I do. Of course we need to get some castle crenulations going. Need some dark oak wood of course to tie into the theme. I keep running out of dark oak wood. It's really unfortunate. So far I love this. It's very simple but we're gonna add to it. I've always had a love for being able to mix in lots of these different wood colors in with all of the stone. I think it works so well. It's so simple. Literally anyone can do it even if you're just starting out at the game. These blocks are simple to get and they make for great builds. But don't worry, we are gonna throw in a little bit of glam into this build, some fun, some sparkle. <laughs> I'm at the top point of my tower now and I think this is where I would like to place the dragon egg. And I'm gonna place it on a little pillar right here. Bam, there we go, that's the spot. <laughs> kind of anticlimactic, but don't worry, we have to decorate now. That's not a bad tower, eh? We can do better though. <laughs> Right, it's time lapse time. Let's get to work. I think that is about the cutest little fortress I have ever seen. What do you think? I just, it fits in so well with the surroundings. I really like it, but I'm not done yet. There's another detail that I would like to add. I have never done this before, but I've decided that for this fortress to make it look a little bit more rich, we're gonna place some diamond blocks in it as detail. I often avoid using ore blocks in my designs. I think it can look a little bit like clunky or cheesy at some points, but I think in this build, it might just do the trick. I think kind of right on these edge areas, whoop, <laughs> like that, that might just be perfect. Let's do it on all the sides. Yep. That is fantastic. Oh my gosh. I really like the diamond block in it. I think we can do a few other details like that to kind of tie in the color, but for right now, I'm quite happy. I think we'll leave it at that. Now, we aren't done, of course. There's one more detail left to think about. We have no way to get from our mainland village over here over to this fortress. Well, I mean, you could swim, I suppose, if you wanted to, but I don't really want to have to be swimming back and forth here every time, and I also don't really want a bridge. I'm thinking there's something that can kind of go with the theme of this world that would fit in quite a lot better. That's right, friends. It is time for a tunnel. I love creating these underwater tunnels. I think they're just so gorgeous, and it fits into a world so well. Let me just see if I guessed this height correctly. I think I might be too low. Oh, nope. Here we are. Okay. So just like one block higher, I think would work perfectly. All right, so here's the path that the tunnel is going to take. It's going to be completely straight and it's going to go underwater and be completely visible. But the entrance and how you get into the tunnel is gonna be a little bit of a secret. There are several things we need in order to make this project work though. So first off, we gotta head to the desert and grab some sand. Let's go. I love collecting sand. It's one of those things that I've never really minded. It's just so chill, so easy. 
All right, I'm back with some sand. So now it's time to put all of this in to be smelted. And then we just have to head out and get some wood. I'm using blazer rods to smelt, by the way. <laughs> it's way easier. Next on the list, more spruce wood. Work on the tunnel has begun. And so far it's going very, very well. I'm just placing in the glass now. Kind of figuring out the height of everything was the hardest part because this is kind of a longer tunnel than I've done before. And the ocean floor is not exactly flat. I've kind of just made it flat. Only thing to do now is just continue placing blocks. This corridor is actually looking awesome so far. It's gonna be amazing once I drain the water, we'll actually be able to see out the sides. I'm really excited. The next hard part is figuring out how exactly to detail this to kind of connect it all together. And I'm thinking just some simple stairs might actually do the trick. Like what if we dragged that across like that and then maybe some slabs on top and then our glass goes here. Really enjoying just going in and placing all of these blocks. It's so fun to build underwater. I kind of forgot. I haven't done it in so, so long. I used to have a series where I built pretty much everything underwater or at least based around the ocean. And that was so much fun. This is such a nice design and it works so well for any world if you ever need to just transport between islands. I feel like I'm learning so much from every single series that I do. I mean, just thinking about that older series that I did where I had that underwater island, I've learned so much, not just in the building and survival mode, but also in how to make a let's play, how to think about things when you're recording and how to talk and how to record and how to figure out the edits between stuff. And honestly, it's not really stuff that you can read about or you can learn in that way. It's just sort of has to be done through trial and error and sort of figuring it out, playing with different formats, things like that. It's been really fun to learn these things and thank you so much to everyone who's given me feedback and things like that on my videos. It's so, so helpful and I appreciate it so much. All right, this tunnel is looking pretty cool so far. I think that'll definitely work, but now comes the challenge of having to drain it and light it up and all of those things. So let's get to work on that. As per usual, I do not have even the slightest clue where I put my sponge. <laughs> Why am I like this? Why? I found it. I only have three pieces, but I did find it. Also, update, I have decided that the entrance to this fortress and secret tunnel is gonna be through the well. Hop down here, <laughs> obviously, it's not just gonna be a blank drop, and then eventually it'll connect cleanly right up to here. And hopefully this works out. All right, this should be fun. <laughs> just gotta do that a few more times. Oh, the dolphins are making me so fast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're so silly. It's so fun to play in the water with them. Oy, okay, stop this. I need to build. <laughs> All right, this is the last of the sponge and this is officially a tunnel. It's a very messy tunnel, but it is a tunnel. It leads from my well in the village over here to the fortress. Honestly, I think this looks so good. This was kind of a space in the world that was a little bit empty and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, but I knew of course that I needed something. So I feel like this was a really good idea and something to do in this area. So my next problem is that this is not really much of a secret, is it? <laughs> it's, well, it's pretty obvious that it's there to be honest, but I'm hoping that I can think of something to fix this. And the first thought that comes to mind is to simply create some signs. So I'm gonna try to do that now. I'm thinking if we place signs like this, we can put water on top of them and then we can bob up and down in the water and hopefully get out. <laughs> well, not quite, but I think if we place a slab right here or maybe even just invert that like that, yeah, so now we can get out. So it looks a little odd, but if you're just kind of passing by, that's not the most obvious thing in the world, right? It's not that obvious that that's flipped that way. Then we can pop down here and we'll be able to fall through and we'll also be able to climb back up and get up through the water. I think that works well, it kind of hides it. Yeah, that, that works, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna go with that. 
I think I'm going to take the end of this video to answer a few more of your questions. This is something that I like to do every now and then because you guys ask quite a lot of questions and I don't always get time to respond to them in the comments. So the first question I'm getting is, this is from Eric and this comment is about Bella's armor. So this is leather horse armor. Some of you are wondering how I have her pink. I can dye her armor whatever color I'd like it to be because it is leather. I think this is only a Java edition thing. I don't know why, but I think it is. Is. Sorry, Bedrock players. Next question is from Ducky, and it's what do I use to edit? I currently edit with Premiere Pro. I like it, but it's kind of expensive. Personally, I have the student deal on the Adobe products, so I'm not minding it too much, and I'm really enjoying using it, to be honest. If you are wondering what I record with, or what shaders I'm using, or version I'm using, or anything like that, that info is usually down in the description. I've had some people use my business email for stuff like that recently. Please don't use my business email for things like that. I try to keep that to just business. If it's filled with spam, it makes my job so much harder. Just taking a second to kind of check on my iron farm. This is what I've got so far. Honestly, that's really good. I've never AFK'd this. Like, not once. Not once have I come here to AFK. <laughs> I probably should. Once we fight the wither and need a beacon, I'll have to AFK this overnight. And to be honest, an overnight might be all that this needs. I still haven't covered it up either. But you guys have given me some very good suggestions. The problem is I can't put anything solid next to it. So I can't just do like a tiny little tower. Because if I put a solid block, the iron golems can spawn on the solid block in a certain radius. So I have to do something with transparent blocks. So that leaves like leaves, glass, that type of stuff. I'm sure I'll think of something, but at the minute, I'm not motivated to do much. And I'm kind of glad we worked on the fortress today. The next question is from Alexia and they ask, where do I get my building inspiration from? To be honest, this is kind of a complicated question. I get inspiration from so many different sources. I feel like I've talked about this a couple of times before, but movies in real life are a really big source of inspiration, but also this world in general, I kind of try to just let it inspire me. I feel like especially when recording a let's play, it makes a lot of sense to make it feel like I'm getting my ideas organically in the game. Like in this episode, for example, example, I went mining diamonds at first and that gave me the idea that with my diamonds, I should build a fortress that has diamonds as details and I should put my most valuable object, the egg, right at the top of it. So basically the game itself inspired a build in the game. I let these sort of organic inspiration moments happen quite a lot, for example with Vincent at the tavern or with this farm area here or with the foxes. With the foxes I was out working in the taiga and I saw that there were foxes and I decided, you know what? We need to make a place for these foxes. And that's what I did. And that's how that build came apart. So I think if you just look around your world and think about what types of things that you need or want, I think the ideas can organically come to you if you let them. I also see a couple of comments saying I should have put leaves around here. And I totally agree. <laughs> I think I just forgot because honestly, I was planning on putting leaves. I. Obviously these pumpkins grow on, whoops, they grow on quite big vines, so it makes sense to have quite a lot of leaves in this area. I don't know why I didn't do that. I'm really scatterbrained, guys. <laughs> I'm in school now. I only have like 30% brain power for YouTube and it's not enough some days. I think honestly that inspiration comment is one of my biggest tips for doing Let's Plays in general right now. Like that's something I've really learned in terms of making a video flow and make sense to an audience. If I get my ideas for builds on camera, it makes a lot more sense for all of you who are watching to kind of see the progression of a world and see how I got from point A to point B rather than me thinking of something, I don't know, late at night and then coming in the next day to record and and the idea just spontaneously came out of thin air and you guys have no idea where I got that idea. It just makes a lot more sense and it's something that I'm trying to do a lot more for these videos. A few of you are asking what I'm going to do for the next update. Obviously the next update for Minecraft is pretty big and has been announced at this point. I am extremely excited for this update and I was so excited when they announced it. Oh my gosh. I just think it's such a big deal. I honestly loved every single aspect and I think there'll be great changes to the game coming at 1.17. However, 1.17 is not coming out for quite a while. We have to wait until summer, which means we have all winter to think of other things to do in the meantime. But it does of course beg the question, am I going to be starting a series for that version? And of course, of course I'm going to be starting a series for that version. And to be honest, I can't wait. I don't know exactly what this is going to entail and I'm not going to make any promises at this time, 
because, well, we don't really have enough information about the new version that's coming out. But I can definitely safely guarantee that there will indeed be a series for 1.17. I don't know if that'll be a continuation of this world in seasons or if it'll be a brand new world. To be honest, if I had my preference, it probably will be a brand new world. Just something that I personally prefer to do, but I don't know. The time is not here yet and I cannot answer for sure what'll I do. What do you usually do in your world when a new update comes? Do you like doing a long-term world and seeing people do series and stuff like that where they're doing seasons in their world? Or do you prefer to have a fresh start? For me, I, I do love a fresh start. I'm a sucker for the early game. <laughs> I really am. And by the time summer comes, we're going to be in very late game for this world. That looks way better. <laughs> Let's do the farm too. Wait for it, wait for it. There it is. Oh, satisfying. Brilliance. There's a llama on my roof. Why is there a llama on my roof? Dude, this was not a good place to spawn. Hello? <laughs> I, don't, I don't wish for any of your items. Good day, sir. You may live. And with that, everyone, I do think that is going to be all for this episode. Thank you so much for coming and watching this video. I hope you are all having a fantastic day so far. And if you aren't, I hope that it gets just a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. I'll see you in the next episode, everyone. Bye-bye.